Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. Um, I am back with Jay Parker. Thank you so much for joining us again. So today we're going to talk about Cyberpunk Red. We're going to talk about game mastering tips. And the reason why I'm bringing Jay, not only because he's played Cyberpunk Red uh, previously, with especially for a charity that we talked about in another video a while back when we, we incorporated into a G.I. Joe setting, but you also helped write the book as well. Am I correct? Correct. So uh, when we did a review our, of Cyberpunk Red, um, we noticed that the one thing that we were concerned about, because there's so much information there, is about game how to game master it, especially when there's a lot of charts for you know different things. So um, so yeah, um, feel free to give us your thoughts. Like how when you play this game, what how did you set this up? So I ran a few events at like AppleCon and stuff where I ran Cyberpunk Red events. Um, one of the big things that I learned early on, especially when they were still putting it together, uh, was to utilize, like minimize the resources into what you're using. So the book's big. I mean, it's what, 400 pages long or whatever, but you don't need the entire book. All you need to know is the, the sections you're looking at. So I wrote the, the screen sheets for the book and I wrote 10 missions and three of them went in. So they pretty much said, Write 10, they will pick three. And so, but what I did was I took the material from the book. It's like, you want to know what the setting is. So you want to pick the topic. It's like, what are you going to, what are you going to talk about? Like what, what's going to be the theme of the adventure? So I did one, like a music festival or whatever, but it tied into brain dancing. So I, I had a huge, I had a huge serial killer theme through a whole bunch of the missions that did not go in the book. Um, but they were tied together in, in the sense that you didn't need a lot. You didn't need a lot. From the book to, to play it you just need the rules so the, the first thing you want to do is you bookmark the combat rules and then anything that your characters might be doing like if they're if they're net runners you know bookmark the sections or their pictures or whatever or cops you just bookmark the sections out for the players or print them up which is actually the easier way to go so in the starter the starter box you had the handout sheets you could use that you just give to the players and then from there, it's if you have someone that's gonna gonna net run, you want to make sure that you have all the things written down that that their their agents do or their their interfaces do. And so it's really just a matter of like kind of picking picking out what you want, not worrying about the whole book. You don't need the whole book. You just need to know the little areas that you want to dabble in. Okay, so if you wanted to do an like adventure dealing with um, car racing in some yeah. way. You know, you just focus on those rules and and so forth. And same thing. Would you say the same thing about net running? As Absolutely. Well? I actually had I had a bunch of stuff printed up for when I was running the GI Joe stuff, and so I was able to just like pull pull out the sections. Like, all right, so someone's doing net running, so let's pull up, you know, pull out that that thing, and it's like what six or seven pages long. You flip it open, and the rules are right there, so they're easy to access. Um, the the beta rules from way back when you know, then when I was working on the Chromebook those were like a, kind of like a nightmare type thing because it was like they were constantly changing. So you print one up and then they're like, wait, wait we're going to change the rule again. It's like, Shh, yeah, okay. It's like, that's fine. I can make it work. So even though if I ran GI Joe back when I first started doing it, it still, it still is manageable. So the only difference is you have it all in one plate, you have all, all in one big book now. And so bookmarking, just like with alien, you got to bookmark your sh <laughs> now I know that you've uh, you're ex you're an experienced uh, I don't know what's the term for it I guess a convention uh, dungeon master or yeah. convention game master. So if you bring a, this game into a convention, you're gonna have people that have either um, never played it or maybe want to uh, uh, maybe try out a different uh, role or, or some sort. How how do you how would you recommend controlling that? Like, would, is there a certain amount of roles you have available for players? Would you limit certain things so that? Um... What I do is I bring I bring pre-gen characters, one paragraph about the backstory, and all their equipment and everything already provided. Like, here's what you're playing, or he, here you can pick from this pile. So when I run when I run convention games, especially if I'm running like when I was running 2020, it was I had all the characters already done up and I put them on the table. It's like, all right, who's got tickets first? As like, you can pick from the pile first, or you guys can figure out how you want to distribute characters. So you know, and it, it works. It works well. So pre-gen, don't don't do character generation at the table. I wouldn't. Even, I would even say, don't use the starter kit. Um, 
pre-gens they have because it allows you to like kind of roll to see what the stats would be and stuff have everything already predetermined so all you have to do is explain how the rule works for combat and how net running works if you had a net runner for convention games for a two-hour convention game don't bother with anyone that can net run because it just it's it even though it's quicker it's still more complicated you had to explain it and to rookie players it's still it'll, it'll bog down your game time but if you're looking if you have experienced players throw throw them on there okay how would you work on the challenges of the game like when it comes to uh like uh, skill checks and um, uh, combat situations. What, what? How would you? How would you tell someone to prepare if they're trying this for the first time? Like, what? What? How would you? How would you set that up? Don't panic. <laughs> like literally, that <laughs> that is the, the best advice ever. Don't panic. It's really easy. All the, like all the mechanics are ultra easy. Even the auto fire rules are easy. Everything. It's. I mean, just take your D10. Have your damage dice ready. Um, in some cases, even the game master, should, if people are new to it, print up the the one page overview of what the combat rules are, which actually they have in the what the starter box or whatever it was. So you can just use that, or use the one, or if you have the PDF version of the book, then just print up that section. Okay. So, and then have that for the players, or you can just simplify, it, type up your own cheat sheet or crib sheet or whatever, and say here's the basics of how it's supposed to look. So. But okay. you don't want them to panic. It's not D and D fifth edition. It's not like you have to have like twelve hundred card decks to make the game work. At least for me, I'm I'm not a. I mean, Alien was complicated enough, even though it wasn't that complicated. Um, but it's really it's simplified math. Hmm. The the reality is, Cyberpunk Red is way easier mechanical wise than twenty twenty was. Hmm. And I think that's the big thing because we, we live in an age where attention span is out the window because of tech of, of the devices we have so it, it kind of it compensates for that greatly right. you, you sort of answered my next question i was going to ask you about anyone any game masters or dungeon masters coming in from another system trying this for the first time what what rules they may have to adjust to um was would you think there's anything particular they may have to just keep an eye on if you can, if you can, if you can sling a ten sided die, then you're capable of running Cyberpunk Red. Uh, look, honestly, game mastering. If you if you're good at game mastering to begin with, or storytelling, you can easily run Cyberpunk Red. And then that's the thing. It's like a good game master can storytell it without lots of dice rolls. So how do you? It's like you know, how do you make it? You know, I mean, there are believe me, there are plenty of dice rolls in Cyberpunk Red. But you can still storytell it enough where you can kind of get around that, you know, weave through that that jungle without actually having to, to sling a pile. So, Jay, thank you so much for for sharing that with us. And I hope our viewers out there are are um, feel confident. Go get go pick up the if you have the brick and mortar program where you can get the hard copy of the book from stores. If they're participating, you can get a copy of the PDF. But you have to make sure they're particip participating in the bricks and mortar program. So ask your local stores if they are, and if they are, then you, you can get a copy of the PDF, I believe. So, but uh, the books the books were shipped out to the, the game stores. So it's only a matter of time before the hard copies show up. So, you know, it is definitely worth it. Thank you for watching everyone. And um, yeah, be safe out there. Take care.